It is the final week of the Premiership regular season and it is incredibly exciting. There is so much still to play for as we head into Super Saturday. Hello amateurs and welcome back to the channel here with you throughout the season and beyond. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now, this is the week just gone where all the end of season dinners happen, all the awards ceremonies and it always feels a bit strange to me as a typically amateur player that this happens before the end of the season. But, you know, in the professional ranks, you know, they want to get away, get off to their holidays as soon as that date comes when they're not playing any more rugby. So it's understandable, um, but it always does feel a little bit strange to me. The current state of play in the Premiership is that Northampton Saints home semi-final absolutely nailed down now. That was great. They had their final home game last week. They do all the award ceremonies. So they've got a lovely run in now to a semi-final and hopefully a final for them. Saracens have also qualified, but they'll be desperate to get a home semi-final. They know exactly how much benefit that means. So expect them to go full bore again this week. And then uh, Bath and Sale in third and fourth. Bath looking strong. It's going to take a lot for them to miss out, but potentially still could and Sale really need a win at Saracens to get into the top four. Then, fifth, sixth and seventh, we have Chiefs, Quinns and Bristol, and it's going to take some effort for them. They all desperately need to win uh, to stand a chance and then hope other results go their way. All these games on Saturday at five past three kickoff. Anybody know why it's such a weird timing, five past three? Let me know in the comments down below if you know why that is. It always just seems strange to me. Um, and we're going to start off. I said there's <laughs> something riding on every game, and I expect you're thinking, Gloucester, Newcastle, there's nothing riding on that one. Well, I think there is. You know, not in terms of the premiership standings. That's all uh, done now. But it's Gloucester's last home game of the season after the back of that absolute trouncing at Northampton last weekend and ahead of their Challenge Cup final. They are going to want to put out a big performance. They're going to want to get back on form, feel like their processes, their shape, everything's working ahead of that huge Challenge Cup final, which, frankly, will define their season as either being a success or a complete failure as, as far as I think most people are concerned. And then Newcastle, still without a win, and you know they'll be desperate not to end up with zero wins at the end of this season. So there's a huge amount resting on them as well. It's been a lot spoken about Newcastle, how they haven't invested in their team, in their squad, and how they're a disgrace to the Premiership and how, you know, if they're not going to actually try and compete, then they maybe shouldn't be in the league itself. Now, I've got a slightly different thought about this. I think if, well, they knew there was going to be no relegation. So if they are waiting to invest at the right time, if they're looking after their money, which makes them long-term sustainable, uh, a better chance of being long-term sustainable, and they do come back and invest in future years with the money that they've saved this year, then I'm okay with it, but only if they do that. So time will tell on that, but it's not a good look to have a team at the bottom of the league losing every single game. I'm going to go with Gloucester. I think it'll be I think it might be pretty ugly for a lot of this game up front. I think there'll be nerves galore. I think there'll be tension. Um, but I think Gloucester will come through and win convincingly in the end, probably scoring a few late tries. OK, the game that I would suggest uh, a lot of neutrals certainly are really looking forward to is Quinns versus Bristol uh, in sixth and seventh. And it's one of these two to stand a chance of going up um, or getting to the semi-finals. Excuse me. They, uh, they need to win. They need to win with a bonus point, probably. Um, and they are going to go all out. Both teams love to throw the ball around, obviously. Quinns this week have announced the signing of Tito Lamasatelli to replace Will Collier, which is a great bit of business for them. He is an outstanding tight head. Bristol have had Bernard uh, Yancy van Rensburg voted Gallagher Premiership Player of the Month for April as well reward for some fine form not just this month but throughout the season he's been a brilliant player for Bristol this year I think everybody knows this is going to be a high scoring thriller there's probably going to be this so I can't imagine that neither team will fail to get the bonus points so plenty of tries 30 something 40 something probably and I'm going to go 
with Quinns to bounce back after their disappointment last week uh, to take this one. They do need to make sure they get their players back, though. They need their players in the correct position. I think losing Murley last week was huge for them at Exeter, the reshuffle that ensued as a result of that. Um, so as long as everybody's fit for Quinns, or majority are, then I expect them to get the home win against Bristol. Next game we're going to look at Leicester Tigers versus Exeter. Leicester in eighth and out of the race. Exeter in fifth and very much in it. They need a win. They need a bonus point win probably and then hope that Saracens beat Sale. And if that's the case, they will get that fourth spot or a semi-final spot in any way. Uh, Jasper Visa was voted player's player of the season for Tigers this week and they've got, I think we'll see a performance out of them. They all feel like they've really not had a great season they've sort of shown glimpses of really pushing on and, and being a good side but they just haven't put it all together this year it's the last home game of the season they want to give their fans something to really cheer about and i think we'll see a good performance from them exeter as i said in fifth henry slade voted supporters player of the year this week and also really importantly has signed up extended his contract so he's going to be at sale uh, sorry excuse me at exeter for what will probably be, I guess, the rest of his career. Maybe one big contract to come at the end. He himself spoke about the fact that they've been talking a lot about potential for this team, and that's been the talk all season, you know? And he's saying, we should stop talking about that now. We've got to where we are, probably ahead of schedule, so let's believe in that. Let's be who we are. Let's be the team we can be. And that is good to hear, because I picked up on that from Rob Baxter previously, where I thought maybe he's just trying to take pressure off the team maybe but maybe they wouldn't believe it themselves so interesting to hear that Exeter are talking about being a championship team this season however I don't think they're there yet I think they might struggle away at Tigers I'd see it being close but I think Leicester might just nick this one um, not a popular opinion I understand but I think that might be what happens okay a complete change of uh, playing styles here as we see Saracens at home at the Stonex absolutely very tough to beat them there uh, versus Sale with Alex Sanderson who knows exactly why Saracens are very hard to beat there as I said at the top Saracens in second they have yet to confirm a home semi-final and they will desperately want to do that for two reasons one if they lose and don't get a home semi-final this will be the last home game for Owen Farrell for all the Vunipolas and several other big players that are leaving this season. They don't want that. They don't want to leave the Stonex on a defeat. No way. So they are going to be going all out to make sure they get a home semi-final. I have no doubt about that. Sailing fourth, I feel they have to win. Um, no, they definitely do have to win because otherwise one of the other teams is very likely to overtake them. Uh, Sanderson, Alex Sanderson himself, <laughs> announced the three-year deal on the pitch at the end of last week's game, which was a very kind of strange moment, <laughs> but it happened. Um, and, of course, they've been going well. You know, they're on a run, but it's such a big ask for a team to go back to back to back to back to back to win a title. If they did end up winning this title, it would be absolutely incredible. I don't see it happening. I think Saris are going to win this one, which will knock Sale out of the semi-final standings um, I think it will be tactical for long periods I think there will be a lot of field position a lot of putting pressure um, from both teams that will be what they try to do and then take their opportunities while, while they're there Saris have actually started doing that they've been absolutely ruthless in recent weeks and up until recent weeks I said there hasn't been that ominous feeling about Saracens that you often feel towards the end of the season well I think it's there now I think that feeling is there where they just seem to be nailing everything in the real important parts of the game. It is ominous for everybody involved. Saracens to win this one. Okay, next game up, and this could be a very entertaining affair, I believe. Bath at home versus Northampton. Bath in third, still need, I think, at least one point to guarantee qualification and could potentially get second if they win and Saracens lose. Uh, some... Uh, updates on the signings. Uh, Rory McConaughey, who's not playing that much at the moment, is staying. And Josh McNally, who also isn't playing that much, the second row is going. Uh, so a few ins and outs there from Bath, but otherwise very, very stable. And 
with almost everybody fit, they are looking strong going into the end of the season. Up at Newcastle last week, I think they got a job done. I think that's really what you're looking to do up there and they can now push forward and look to go and win a title. They've been a great team all season. They absolutely deserve a semi-final spot and I think they'll go all out in this game against Northampton. Northampton, who this week had Finn Smith voted as Players' Player of the Year. Wonderful achievement for such a young man. And to nobody's surprise, Courtney Laws in his final season was voted Supporters' Player of the Year. Now, Northampton, with that ridiculous performance last week against Gloucester, let's not read too much into that. Gloucester were dire. Northampton were amazing, but it's much easier when play opposition are falling off tackles and giving you space. I don't expect there to be that space there this week. I think they're really going to have to earn it. Um, but I think it could be an entertaining game, and I am going to take Bath to win this one because they have to. Uh, but otherwise, it'll be very close. OK, that's it. Final week. Predictions are done. They are in the can. And if it goes the way I suggest, that will mean we have Saints, Saris, Bath and Quinns in the semi-final with Quinns travelling to Northampton and Bath travelling to Saracens. Two mouth-watering semi-finals, but frankly, whatever way it goes, the semi-finals and final are likely to be amazing. Premiership rugby this season has been outstanding and I've loved it. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Any predictions that I've said that you disagree with, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and any other factors that you think will play a role uh, in this week's fixtures. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up while you're down there. It helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.